Okay, let's dive into the battery pack. Let's see if my screwdriver holds out long enough. Wood screws. Not surprising. Oh, I forgot to show you one thing. <clears throat> With the bike came this ignition key and then this mysterious key. But I figured out that it's a lock for the battery pack. This little cylinder comes in and out. I don't know why someone would be worried about strolling away with such a heavy battery pack. But, okay. Okay, let's take the top off. There we are. Five sealed lead acid batteries, and they have a date stamp on them the 17th of the 12th of 59, which is December 17th, 2016, in Western style. Oh, that's interesting. I thought the battery pack had to be in the bike to charge, but there's actually, this is going to be awkward, but there is a charging port in the pack itself. I don't know if that's going to show up, but right there, you can plug the charger directly in there so I don't have to have it. In the bike I can actually bring the pack up by itself okay well there's a happy coincidence <clears throat> I just received the parts to repair the Jev Q so I can move on a little bit so let's take a look at the voltage of these five cells nominally they're 12 volts but 12 volt batteries actually run about 13.2 volts because of the way the cells are made inside it now this pack I pretty much drove with the bike until it wouldn't roll anymore. So I suspect these are going to be some amount under 12 volts. But the important thing is we want them all to be about the same voltage. We don't want some higher and some lower because that can lead to irregular charging levels, irregular current, and it's actually hard on the batteries when some are higher and some are lower. So let's just uh, take a look. 11.69, about what I expect, 11.74, so that's 5 one hundredths of a volt off, which isn't too bad, 11.74, that's good, 11.75, that's a tenth down, that's actually not too great. And 11.68, again, not great. So we've got about a tenth of a volt maximum difference between the cells. So what I'm going to do is get a 12 volt charger. Uh, actually, instead of charging them up, I'm going to drop the voltage down so they're all similar, say about 11.6 volts. And then <clears throat> that's called bottom balancing. I'm with the Church of Jack on this concept of bottom balancing. When they're all equal at the bottom, it doesn't really matter if you charge them. You don't need a battery management system to make sure that they'll stay in charge because they just do. Uh, if they're all going up and down at the same rate. Well, as I was reviewing the video that I just shot, I think my idea of sealed lead acid just went out the window because I noticed they all have this little strip across the top. So on this one, I popped the strip off, which was glued down a little bit, and then I noticed 
one, six little rubber caps. You take the rubber cap off. This looks like a miniature version of a car battery with actual acid and water in it. So I'm going to take a piece of plastic and dip it in here. It's not wet. I wonder if that means the water is low or it's just a different chemistry than what I'm suspecting. Wow. Do you hear that little rush of some kind of gas? Probably hydrogen because of the way these batteries work. Oh, oh yep, yeah, that one's a little bit wet right on the tip. Because I can get a little further down. Just a little bit of moisture on the end. Well, with my handy dandy magnifying headset and a little bit of light, all I see is some white material, but I don't see any liquid across the top. It looks like, yeah, it looks like plates across. So, lead acid, even more primitive technology than what I initially believed.